Got Jack Capizza on the line from the Globe and Mail. Thanks for joining us today, Jack. Oh, it's magnificent. Yourself? <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, I want to talk about uh, an article you wrote uh, recently, Comcast Goes for Money, Not Service. And, and for uh, our viewers who don't know who Comcast is, they're a huge uh, internet service provider, uh, cable company down in the U.S. What's this all about? They, they say that they're actually blocking out users of certain peer-to-peer -peer file sharing networks. Yeah, they've, uh, it's a very complicated situation, but what they're doing basically is using a technology that almost all uh, service providers are offering now, which is uh, called bandwidth shaping, I think is the current uh, uh, polite word for it. But basically speaking, what it does is it, it speeds up uh, uh, transfers of uh, certain kinds of sig signals across the internet and slows down others, and it can tell the difference. That means if you're sitting there downloading uh, a movie from a peer-to-peer a -peer site, they can slow it down or even stop it. But if, of course, of course, if you're using their uh, voice over internet telephone, that gets priority, this kind of thing. What happened with Comcast was that it was, uh, it had actually uh, put a block on uh, files being transferred by BitTorrent, which is one of the big file sharing uh, applications. And, what, and, and they, they took one extra step farther than this, than just simply blocking it. What they did is they sent a signal to both the um, a downloading computer and the source computer saying uh, that, this, that uh, the, the, the service was cut off, or at least there's no more communication between the, the two computers. Now, from the user's point of view and from the sender's point of view, it looks like the other side ended up uh, canceling the request. And, uh, and but, but a message came up saying that to, that to that effect. But in fact, it wasn't the other computer. It was Comcast that did it. And so it's lying to its customers. That was the big issue. Well, I, I can see the issue here. Obviously, uh, as these internet service providers, uh, the cable companies, what have you, provide more and more services like internet uh, telephone service and what have you, obviously the bandwidth is an important thing. If everyone's downloading uh, uh, you know, 20 or 30 movies a month uh, off the, the BitTorrent network, obviously the, the bandwidth is going to start getting uh, uh, very it, constrained. But it's exactly. interesting that they, they wouldn't tell their users. Well, they are actually. I mean, Simpatico just recently uh, told uh, an online user forum that they're doing it too. But there are good ways of doing it and bad ways of doing it. I mean, if I, if I connect to uh, my peer-to-peer -peer, uh, groups and start downloading files that way, uh, and if it takes me a long time, I don't really mind. The problem is, 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 is when Simpatico, should they wish, uh, decide to uh, cancel all my traffic in that way, then that's, that's exercising something else. I mean, it doesn't matter to me whether I, uh, when I'm downloading a song from wherever, uh, takes me five minutes or ten minutes, it doesn't really make much of a difference. But if it takes me three days, then I get a little bit annoyed. I mean, especially if that is a result of the, um, of the transfer rate. Now, what I understand is that some of the people who are using peer-to-peer -peer or BitTorrent um, uh, downloads, uh, they're traffic has been slowed to something like 60 kilobytes per second, which is kind of interesting uh, because if you're buying, let's say, a three or four megabit connection to the internet, why are you suddenly getting it at 30 kilobits per second? This is incredibly slow. So what are you buying if you're actually buying a, a super fast route to the, high, to the information highway? You're basically, uh, I guess the cable companies, or sorry, the internet service providers are basically telling you uh, what you can almost do with uh, the connection and, and what you can't do. Exactly. Uh, th th that brings up the old issue of net neutrality, which is uh, uh, people, there's a huge movement out there saying that you've got to uh, 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 treat every demand for whatever on the internet equally. And of course, if there's too many people online, well, just the whole thing slows down, but it slows down equally for everybody. Uh, this, of course, is, is a mess for uh, those Internet providers who are supplying you with uh, voice over Internet telephones because if that slows down, boy, do you ever notice that and boy, do you ever get upset about it. Uh, but uh, the problem there is, of course, that uh, but only 2 or 3 percent, let's say, of the users of the average Internet service are actually doing things like downloading music or movies or whatever using that heavy stuff. So they take a look at their bottom line, the ISPs take a look at their bottom line and say, well, if we upset 3% of our people, so what? And that becomes well, a very interesting uh, a philosophical point there. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, as we go on here. Um, I'm hoping market forces uh, come into play and if uh, certain internet service providers uh, start doing this that uh, people can march off to uh, the competitors who uh, hopefully won't be doing this. 
Oh, well, the competitors are also using the technology, except uh, they might be tuning it a little differently. You might be able to get downloads a little bit faster from them, but they all have to do this because they're trying to maximize their profit from the amount of uh, backbone they're getting. Well, Jack, I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us today. I got to go. I got to download some stuff off BitTorrent before my uh, connection gets slowed down. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Jack Capizza from the Globe and Mail. You can check out more of his articles at globetechnology.com.